put on that by one do one car for ourselves. In your blood, you be able to catch in that catching the can call Jagar and Bo one in the Iga Natachaya Hanile. Are you ready? Are you sure you are ready? I am privileged this morning, so much happy to welcome to the microphone our father, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyu to come, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. I said the Lord bless you. Promote you. Amen. Lift you up. Amen. Higher. Amen. Today, you'll get to a higher level in Jesus' name. Naha Jesus. Amen. Father, we well, thank you today. We know you love everyone here. You have placed us in ministry. You placed us in a profession. And our Lord, we're asking everyone will be lifted up. Yeah. Every minister, every professional, every brother, every sister, every worker, Lord, lift your people up in Jesus' name. Yeah. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We started a minister's conference on Friday. And we spoke about strength. Supernatural strength for the fainting. And the reason why the Lord is bringing the message on the Holy Spirit is that the church has limited the Holy Spirit. The children of Israel limited the Father. And the people of Israel, at the time of Jesus, they limited Christ. The church today is limiting the Holy Ghost. And the only way we can have strength, supernatural so strength, spiritual strength, abiding strength, is that we have a new look, a new understanding, and a new approach to what we know about the Holy Spirit. I'm reading from Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 4. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, not many days hence. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, But ye shall receive power. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. After that the Holy Ghost has come, upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me you receive the holy ghost the holy spirit you receive the power and then he says ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth Please, you must hear with understanding what I come uh, to present to you. You must not allow the tradition of the past, the understanding of the past, the view of the past, and our denominational limitation to make us miss a lot that God himself is sending to us. Look at that verse 8. But ye shall tell me out aloud... He didn't say, hear me out, ye shall receive tongues. You know, tongues is part of what we receive. But the major, 
the central, the deep thing it brings to us is not, you shall receive tongues after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And every time we talk on the Holy Ghost, somebody is thinking of shaking. You shall receive shaking. Every time we talk about the Holy Ghost, somebody is thinking about shouting and screaming. Every time we talk about the Holy Ghost, somebody runs there, runs there, runs everywhere. And you shall receive uh, the attitude of the athlete. No. Ye shall receive power if there's anything missing in the church, the whole church, whether it's, you know, the council of churches or whether it's Pentecostal church, whether it's deeper life or it's Baptist church or whatever, it is the power. We have the tongues, we have the shaking, we have all the other things, the central thing that Jesus said, ye shall receive power. We lack that power. He says ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, you are Bible preacher, teach us yourself. You mean, you know, that those two names mean the same thing. You, are, you have, you receive you possess, you are energized, you are driven by the anointing of the Spirit, the baptizing of the Spirit, and you are driven by the comfort of the Spirit and the dynamite of the Holy Ghost and the empowering of the Holy Ghost, the fructifying Spirit that comes to bear fruit in our lives. And then is the guiding spirit that draws us and drives us and directs us to the place of success. And the healing spirit of the spirit that dwells and that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you. That spirit will quicken your mortal body because it dwells in you. He is the interceding spirit. And we, we shouldn't miss all that because we are pursuing tongues and tongues and tongues. Where is the anointing? And where is the burning spirit that burns every child out of our lives? And where is the comfort of the spirit when we're bereaved and when we suffer persecution, when we suffer misunderstanding, when people misunderstand and they misconstrue what we're doing? Where is the comfort of the spirit and where is the dynamite that blows everything, everything shakeable, shaking out of our lives? And where is the empowering, the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit? Where is the fruit? You know, we've been laboring here for 30 years now. And we have maybe some 300, 400 people. And even those 300, 400 people are not stable. Where is the fructifying power, productivity of the Holy Spirit? And where is the guidance? Because you know what we did the other time, we do today. And the way we did it the other time, we do today. No improvement, no increase, no enlightenment and there is no progress and where is the guiding of the Holy Spirit that says don't go there yet come here then after two years go back to that Asia Minor he needs to guide us and where is the healing of the Holy Spirit because anywhere the Spirit of God is there is healing healing in our body as you look at as we look at the church, the older elderly part of the church has the same challenge that the elderly people of the world have. As you know, we grow older, the, uh, seek, the seeker will also become. When we were young, we were able to run here and there, but now as the church is getting older, the dementia, the forgetfulness, and the cancer, and the, you know, whatever happens to older people in the world is happening in the church. And yet, 
when we have the fullness of the Spirit, there's the healing of the Holy Spirit, and there's the intercession, intercession of the Holy Spirit. Have you, have you noticed that we pray, we pray, any prayer pattern we have gotten into from 1990, 1992, from 30, 40 years ago, when we pray, we pray exactly the same. It's registered like a tape in our mind, and we roll out that tape. If we're praying in tongues, if that same tongue we roll out, it's recorded already there. If we're praying in a language, we roll out the same prayer. We've always prayed. Where is the intercession of the Spirit? That's the challenge I bring as we talk about waiting for the power by faith of the Spirit, the Spirit that God Himself outpours on us. We're looking at witnessing on the field, on the the Spirit's oversight. Already he says in that Acts chapter 1, verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What Holy Ghost? The joyful Spirit. The joyful Spirit. I want you to understand that those disciples were sorrowful. On the way to Damascus, what are you talking about that you seem so sorrowful? They were sad. What is it? They said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has happened? We're sad. We're sorrowful. And when sadness and sorrow, when they come together, it weakens your mind. It weakens your feet. It weakens your body. But... When you receive the joyful spirit, the joy of the Lord becomes the strength of your life. Those disciples, sorrowful, sad, they were locked up behind the door, behind the curtain. Because sorrow and sadness also brings fear. Look at what happened to our master. Look at what happened to the leader. And uh, if that happened to the green tree, what will happen to the dry tree? Because of that, they were fearful. It shall be witnesses unto me. No, they couldn't witness to anybody until the Holy Ghost comes and the joy of the Spirit, the joyful Spirit comes upon us as it came upon them. In Romans chapter 14, reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 14, we're looking at verse, at verse 17. Verse 17 tells us, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And joy in the Holy Ghost. And when you have a problem in your family, was sad, was sorrowful. When you are bereaved, you are sad and sorrowful. When you are disappointed by a most, the most trusted assistant, sad and sorrowful when somebody takes away the resources of the church and you know he probably says so and so it took church money to go and invest in a business and everything has collapsed and the fellow is not bringing the money back you are sad and sorrowful when you want to have ministry somewhere and then there's a blockage it appears that people they're not supporting not only they are not supporting they're even contradicting and resisting you are sad and sorrowful in that state of mind there's no way you will say i will do this i will do that the energy is taken away and the vision is taking away and the passion is taking away but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you we need the joyful spirit 
happy spirit. It, you know, something just happened, uh, and that thing that happened uh, set your thinking. <laughs> this is dangerous. This is terrible. Am I going to survive this? And then, what you are thinking of that, and you are stressed, and you are depressed, and it's God's grace that you don't even have you know, depression, and you come to the pulpit, the joy of the Lord, that joy that blocks out everything you have heard, everything you have known, every news, bad news the world is giving you. It is that joyful spirit that makes you to be able to overcome and to fly and to soar and to proceed and to progress, you progress in Jesus' name. He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What power? It is the keeping spirit that makes us to have and to keep everything he has given us. You understand? It says that because Jesus said, I am the Son of God. And except you believe that I am He, you will not be saved. That language, Son of God, made the Israelites angry. Will kill him. He'll be crucified. Why? He has blasphemed. What blasphemy? He said, I am the Son of God. And now the trial came. At the point of the trial, the, the high priest said, I adjure you, by the name of God, are you that person, the Christ? And Jesus answered, thou sayest. But you will see the Son of Man. That's the language they didn't want to hear. Coming in the clouds of heaven. And Jesus told his disciples, go tell them, I'm going, it is finished, I've done the work I ought to do. Tell them, Christ is the Son of God, and there is no salvation in any other way, any other person, except through Christ, the Son of God. Hold on now, they killed him. Because he said, I'm the son of God. And the Israelites and the Sanhedrin and those people said, don't say that, please. Don't come here and tell us that Christ is the son of God. And they began to preach and they couldn't avoid saying that Christ is the son of God. They called them. Did we not strictly warn you, challenge you, command you that you must not even preach in this name? And he threatened them. And they just remembered what happened to Christ a few months now. And he threatened them. You say that again, your life will go for it. What helps them to keep that word, to keep that revelation? That Christ is the very Son of God. He shall receive power, the power to keep, the power to keep on preaching, saying the same thing you know, that the Pharisees and Sadducees said, you must not say. That the people of the world said, you must not emphasize in the keeping spirit. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're looking at verse 13 there. It says, hold fast. The sound, of, uh, the, the, hold fast the form of sound word, which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love, which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, that good thing, that gospel message, that salvation through the name of Jesus Christ, the only name that brings salvation, for there is no other name under heaven, in Israel, in any other nation, by which we must be saved, except 
the name of Jesus. This is the cornerstone that the builders rejected, but has become the hedge of the corner. How did they have the courage? How did they have the possibility? How did they have the understanding and the fortitude that they will keep that which everybody is uh, negative to? And it says over here, that which was committed unto thee, you keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in you. Well, if we only hold on to speaking in tongues, talking in tongues, conversing in tongues, praying in tongues, and we don't have the power to keep that which has been committed into our hands because we do not really have the keeping spirit, the joyful spirit. And when you are fearful and timid, you say, He'll do this to you if you talk like that again. And there are churches that believe holiness many years ago today because of the circumstances of life and because of what had happened to them and because of the disappointments they have and because of the general attitude by people, by members of their church. The members of their church, they're not just listening to him alone, they're listening to other people. And those other people said, nobody, no one can be holy. And although he's preaching holiness, he been preaching holiness with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind, all his knowledge, and all the examples and illustrations he can give, you see that the people are not listening to holiness message. All they want is healing. All they want is prosperity. And look at the man. is now empty of the message of holiness. He cannot talk about that again. Why? He doesn't have the keeping spirit. The good thing you have, we keep by the Holy Ghost. And have you been preaching repentance? Are you still doing that? Have you been preaching restitution, righteousness, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise, in no way get to the kingdom of God. Is the word of restitution still coming from your mouth? And uh, well, because you want those rich people to come. You want Zacchaeus to come and sit down there and to be able to say Zacchaeus is a member of my church. Is the Zacchaeus in your church born again? I see, you know, see I have the grace and the power to say, up of my goods I give to the poor once they pay the ties to the church one over ten that's all but Zacchaeus said have five over ten I give not to the church I give to the poor and if I have taken anything anything or anyone if you stole another person's servant you saw that he was dutiful knowledgeable he's an expert and you visited their company, and then you begin to talk to him. Now you've taken him. And you know, your promise, what are they paying you here? I'll pay you double. You know how you stole the servant. If you have married another woman, second wife, and in the sight of God, he made the male one, female one, and the two, not the three, the two shall be joined together as one. But now, your first wife is still alive, and the second woman, I can't call her a wife, the second woman came in, and the third woman, you're on the way, and you're still preaching, and you're still saying, I am a Christian, because our pastors themselves, they cannot emphasize that again. They do not have the keeping spirit that makes them to hold on to that good thing that was committed into their hands. 
and to keep that by the Holy Ghost which dwells in you. When the Holy Ghost dwells in us, it'll show us we're going astray. It'll show us we're lowering the standard. It'll show us we're forsaking the Bible. It'll show us we're picking up just ideas around the house today. But he shall receive power. You'll receive power. Amen. The power to stand. The power to say, here I stand. There's nothing else I will do. The power to keep everything the Lord has given you is the joyful spirit. He is the keeping spirit. L is the liberating spirit. You know, we all, as we're growing up in life, we all have habits were picked up. We all have as some um, idiosyncrasies were picked up. And when you become a captain of the army, those idiosyncrasies and the things you used to do, you cannot do them anymore and fit into being the captain. When you become a leader in society, a leader in the local government, a leader in the, in the state, a leader in the nation, there's some private things you used to do. You cannot, you know, continue in it. For example, in the past, before everybody knew you and before photographers were following after you to take your picture and send it to the world, before that came, you woke up in the morning and you took your long chewing stick and you put it in the mouth and you go around the yard and go everywhere, having your long chewing stick there. Maybe that's okay for you, but now you are a public figure. Now you are somebody that the people are interested to find out how does he live? What does he do? You cannot take your long chewing stick anymore and be going around and they take your picture and they show it to the whole world. When we become leaders, when we become ministers, when we become public figures in the kingdom of God, there are things the Lord has to liberate us from. Things the Lord has to liberate us from. And he's provided that. He is the liberating spirit. The liberating spirit. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes, innocently, a man seeing a lady, no bad thing in the heart, just embraces her or puts hand around her neck. Didn't mean anything bad, but now it's a public figure. And when he does that and he showed that to the world, they say, What kind of leader is this? World leader. Doesn't he watch other world leaders in different nations? You cannot do that again. There are things, they may be innocent things. But they will impact on your on the way people view you, on the way people see you, and you are liberated from all those things. If the liberating spirit, it will liberate you. It liberates us in Jesus' name. Now, if we cannot do those innocent things, because now. I'm a minister of the gospel. And the church is watching how I relate with single ladies, how I relate with married women, how I relate with those university teenagers. They're watching. They're not going to give excuse, oh, it's a pastor, or oh, it's an evangelist. And they know they will bring their own interpretation to what you do. That's why we need liberation from every appearance of evil. And we're not just leaving, put your leg there, put your leg there, put your mouth there. Look at Romans chapter 8. I'm looking at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin 
and death. Amen. Amen. In our nation and many nations around, they're shouting and talking about corruption. In our nation, and many nations around, they're asking us questions when they have chance to ask us why. You see it that in our nation, the churches are multiplying, but there's more corruption in the church than ever before. What are you preachers doing? What are you pastors doing? Well, we pastors, we claim we have the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost we have, and the Holy Ghost will talk in tongues, and pray in tongues and run to the edge of the building, speaking in tongues and run over there and lie prostrate on the ground, demonstrating that we have the Holy Ghost and we're talking in tongues. But you know what we lack? The might of the Spirit, the courage of the Spirit, the fearlessness in the Spirit to address the corruption in the nation, how am I going to do that? If I address that in my local church, and you address that in your local church, and he addresses that in the local church, when we all have in the mighty spirit, when we announce that every time, and when we tell the people, are you a member of this church? And you are part of the corruption in the world. I want to tell you, you are not born again. They've never heard that from you. All they have always heard is everybody is born again. And you are born again. And I thank God because you are members of this church. But now you are saying, you have the might of the spirit. The courage of of the spirit and you're telling the people what you need to tell them micah chapter 3 verse 8 in micah chapter 3 verse 8 truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto jacob his transgression and to israel is seen. Micah said, I'm full of power by the Spirit of God, and I'm full of the might to declare unto my nation their sin and their transgression. When we truly have the Holy Ghost, He shall say power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and He shall be witnesses. There be witnesses of the Lord that all these uh, kind of righteousness, superficial righteousness, denomination right, denominational righteousness that our members carry about. I belong to Deeper Life. I belong to Assemblies of God. I, be I belong to Four Square. I believe to the New Generation Church. I believe to this. I belong to this and that. But the corruption is in their life. The corruption is in their mode of walking. Then we pastors have not done well. Let's come back. It shall receive power. Today, it shall receive power. Yeah. The power that will challenge everyone. Everyone that claims to be in the Lord. And there is much in the corruption of the world. Truly, I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Now, how do we do that? We need to keep on being nourished by the spirit. Uh, you know, it's not everybody that reads the scripture that actually benefits from the scripture. You know, you might have known people that are very dutiful and they read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. 
and there is no uh, kind of regeneration and revolution in their lives. They read, <clears throat> they read, they read the Bible, but the Bible does not get inside them. When they get into trouble, they don't remember any promise. When they get into a compromising crossroad, they don't remember any commandment of the Lord. And when they come under pressure, they don't remember the strength, the power of the Holy Spirit. They collapse like they always collapse. But you know, when you read the Bible and the Holy Spirit takes the Bible and he puts it inside you, you will never be the same again. Yeah. Every time before you go out, not just that you read the Bible, not just that you memorize some verses of the Bible, and it's not just that you say, I know that, I know that, I know that. The question is, are you like Daniel? When he got from Judah, and now he's in Babylon. And the teacher didn't, you know, come with him to stay with him. His preacher, whoever his preacher was, did not come from Judah to stay with him there. But the Holy Spirit, you can't take the preacher everywhere, but you can take the Holy Spirit everywhere. You cannot take your counselor everywhere. Even in these days of the cell phone, you cannot always get a counselor. But you can always have the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat, neither of the wine which he drank. And so that purpose remained. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how could they know that they were going to face this fire, but they had read the Bible. When you go through the waters, they will not drown you. And when you go through the fire, it will not burn you. We have all read that, but when we get to that situation, does the Holy Spirit nourish us, remind us, tells us, this is your time to show that that promise is real. He is the nourishing spirit. I pray he will nourish us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes a situation comes, maybe they're expecting a preacher, and they didn't find the preacher, and then they looked around, they saw that he was sitting there, they said, uh, Sir, tonight, the uh, minister, the preacher, is not here. So, please uh, come and address the people. What do you say? Are you so nourished that you have much of the word in your heart that you say, all right, I'll do it. And then you get up and you do it. I pray the Spirit will nourish you. Amen. I said the Spirit will nourish you. Some time ago, the students at the University of Ibada, they invited a speaker, a preacher from England to come and hold a crusade. Then they approached me and they said, please, because you passed out at the University of Ibada. And we all know you come to the crusade. You are not preaching, you sit at the pulpit. So that we can use your picture and draw the crowd. Because that man coming from Britain is not well known here. I said, all right. And so I went there not to preach, but to listen, to hear. What this man, I've never met him myself, what he will preach. And this particular night, I was there sitting at the pulpit. And uh, remember, I didn't come as a preacher. And the um, preacher, he stood up. 
and he preached a good, clear salvation message. And he gave an altar call, and the people responded to the altar call. And then he prayed for salvation, and they took down their names like we normally do. And then, surprisingly, he said tonight, I will not be praying for the sick, but pastor, then he mentioned my name, will come and take over. He never told me a word of that before. What do I do? Here is the public, and the public people are waiting. Here is the evangelist, and he has mentioned my name publicly. Do I whisper to him that, you know, I didn't prepare for that tonight? I'm sorry, I'd like to do what you have said, but I don't want a showdown that, you know, no power, no inspiration, no miracle. No, I didn't say that. By the grace of God, I kept myself nourished by the Holy Ghost. You'll be nourished in the Holy Ghost. And so I got up and I took the microphone. He wanted me to pray for the sick. I took the microphone and pointed in that direction and said, young man there, you should have responded to the altar call. Here is your chance. Get up and repent. And then I pointed to another one. Pointed to another one, the evangelist from the UK. He was looking, he was surprised. How did he know that those people had not responded? Had they responded? Then I prayed for them, the sinners' prayer, prayer of repentance. Everybody say, praise the Lord. And then I said, now the Lord is going to heal the sick. How can you talk like that? With assurance, when you didn't prepare from home. You know why? John and Peter were going to the place of prayer, the temple at the hour of prayer. They didn't plan that they were going to tell that man at the beautiful gate, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man rose up and walked. And here was my chance. I didn't prepare for this. I said, now the Lord is going to heal you. Raise up your hand and lay your hand where you have the challenge. And then we'll preach. And after the prayer, I said, check up yourself. One man in that corner, he was totally blind before the eyes opened. And that other one was on wheelchair. He rose up and began to walk. And jubilation everywhere. Why? Because I kept myself nourished by the Spirit of God. That's what you need to do. What then happened is that man, a member of the Board of Trustees of any Pentecostal church, he took all those pictures and then he went to the Board of Trustees and said, I met a man and described everything you know, and showed them the pictures and the Board of Trustees invited me to England and he called all their ministers together and said I should teach them five days on the gifts of the Spirit. That opportunity came because I kept myself nourished by the Spirit of God. And today, I bring it to you. It shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, that you have the joyful spirit, the keeping spirit, the liberating spirit, the mighty spirit, and the nourishing spirit. Uh, what do you have? You have the outpoured spirit. The outpoured spirit were told in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God. Then he says that I will pour out, pour out, outpour pour out my spirit upon you, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Where are the dreams of the old men and the old women? But if you're being involved in something in the afternoon, active in the afternoon, when you sleep in the night, you dream about that thing, you are active off in the afternoon. But when you come and you have this revealing spirit, and you have this reviving spirit, and say, Lord, I want to receive not just receive tongues, but power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you wait upon the Lord, that Holy Spirit will be poured upon your life. Yes. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and on my servants, and on my maidens, on my handmaidens, will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Can you say amen to that one? Yeah. Pour out of my spirit. As you look at, you know, members of the church today, start with deliverance churches. Those deliverance churches their members are more conscious of Satan and evil spirit than the Holy Spirit. The deliverance minister talks more about the evil spirit, about the witches, about the wizards, about all those destructive spirits. And he doesn't talk much about the spirit of God from heaven. And you know, in those deliverance churches, they are more fearful of the devil than the normal old time historic churches. Why? Because the deliverance minister talks more about the other spirit. Why don't you turn around? They shall receive of my spirit. I will talk about the Holy Ghost. I will talk about the powerful, mighty Holy Ghost. And our message will change, our ministration will change, and even our members, the fear they used to have, they now know that Calvary has conquered Satan, evil spirit, and evil power, and it has blown up the head and the center of activity by those evil spirits. And I pray that you as a minister, you will so talk about who you have, the Holy Ghost, that our people will not be fearful anymore in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're going to preach. And then somebody uh, comes to you and he whispers to you and he says, Evangelist, pastor, mind your words. There are some people there with human spirit. Those people are dangerous, dastardly. And so, and mind how long you preach. Because those people, whenever they threaten and they say, this is what we will do. I'm telling you, Pastor, you're a new person here. Those people will trust them. They will do what they say they will do. Sir, did you trust the Holy Spirit? Did you trust the Holy Scriptures that God, the mighty God of heaven, will do what he said he will do? I lost your amen. And so we preachers, because of the news we're here, because of the information we're here, that those people with human spirit, they're so powerful, they're so mighty, we know them. But we also know beyond the human spirit, we know the Holy Spirit. And it says, I'll put my spirit upon you. You will overcome. 
I said you will overcome. P, the prevailing spirit. We will prevail. In Christ, we will prevail. By the spirit, we will prevail. Is the prevailing spirit. And it dwells on the inside of us. And then kill is the quickening spirit. The quickening spirit. When it comes into your life, you will not have slow, sluggish steps. <laughs> My brother, I thought you said you got the Holy Ghost. Yes, I did. It's quickening spirit now. Can you walk quicker? Uh-uh. You know my age. Can you move quicker? Uh-uh. I cannot do that. But you have the quickness spirit. Yes, I do. I doubt your confession. When the quickness spirit comes, he quickens us. We have passion. And we have dream. And we have vision. And that place we are going in the power of the Spirit. I will get there. I will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. The Spirit we have is not the Spirit that kills our spirit. It's not the Spirit that slows us down. It's not the Spirit that weakens us. It is not the spirit that makes us sick. Every information we hear that gets to our head makes us sick. Every kind of bad news we receive comes into us. It, make, it gets us down. You see, my brother, I cannot do anything now. My hands are weak because of that thing you told me. My feet, they're weak because of that thing you told me. And that thing I see there, and they tell me this is the interpretation. It weakens my soul that I cannot go again. The go-getter in me is now dead. No. When we receive the Holy Spirit... Is the quickening spirit. It will quicken you in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are on. You will not be weary. You will walk. You will not faint. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, also, also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. He quickens us and makes us to walk quicker, speak faster, and think clearer because that spirit abides in us. That spirit will abide in you. That's the essence of having the Holy Ghost. Speak in tongues, good. Go beyond that. I speak in tongues, I speak in tongues. Pastor, can I speak in tongues for you? Mm -mm, don't speak in tongues for me. Show me the power. Show me the joyful spirit. And show me the keeping spirit. And show me the mighty spirit. Show me the nourishing spirit. Show me the overcoming spirit. Show me the prevailing spirit. And show me the quickening spirit. And show me the reviving spirit. When we have the spirit of God, revive us. The revival we are praying for, revive me, O oh Lord, revive our church, O oh Lord, revive everyone. That revival will come through the spirit that comes to abide and dwell in you. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Wait in Jerusalem 
until you be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For not many days is you receive the Holy Ghost. And it says you shall receive power. Not only tongues, it shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and also in Abba, the uttermost part of the world. Rise up now, that reviving spirit is here. It will revive every one of us. It's the born spirit. It'll burn every child out of your life. Quickening spirit, it'll quicken you. It'll give you passion. You walk, you run, you're not fit, you'll not be weary. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. The word has come to us now. The power of the Holy Spirit. The evidence that we have received. The power promised by Christ our Savior. That when the Spirit of God comes in a baptismal measure, He fills us with power. Not just the tongues. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that makes the difference. We have heard the word of what God has in mind for the church that will make us to go and fulfill his plans and fulfill his purpose. Receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, like Michael. He said, I'm full of the power of the Spirit to declare the will of God, the mind of God, and to show the people their transgressions and to declare the sin of the people to them to call them to repentance. That's the spirit of God doing God's will through us when we have him. Not just the tongues. Not just the shaking. But a power that will make the sinner to turn around. To have a change of life. That's what the Spirit of God does in the church. And as we look at our churches today, we know the challenges we have there. Mere religion has not fulfilled God's purpose for establishing the church. We have a real opportunity this morning to connect to this power as we open our mouths we're everywhere now and call upon the Lord to bring us back to God's mind as we 
Ask the Holy Spirit to come now. To fill us. Energize us. Empower us. And give us boldness. To go. And do the work of God. Everywhere please open your mouth. Both here in Alpha location and everywhere. We are connected to this minister's professional conference. The Lord has spoken to us now. To ask. That the liberated spirit of God. Will liberate us. From all carnalities. From all things contrary to the will of God. The spirit of might. Mighty, powerful spirit of God. We fill us with the might of God. With the power of God. To go. And declare. The word. With are looking at faces. We will speak the truth. Not being afraid. Let's pray for the nourishing spirit. That will nourish us. As we study the word of God. Wholeheartedly. With open mind. And the spirit of God nourish us. Feast us. With the will of God. The mind of God. And we are ready to go. We are ready to run. We are ready to speak for heaven. Let's pray this morning. As the word has come to us, we have seen the example in God's servant that at all times we are ready when nourished by the spirit of God to do God's work the way God wants us to do it. Please everywhere pray now and call upon the Holy Spirit, the nourishing spirit, to come in now. To come in now. The poured out spirit. The spirit of God is poured out upon all. As the Lord spoke to the early church. Better in the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. They obeyed. And the power came. We saw... The difference between then and their past. That Peter could stand and said, we shall obey God rather than men. When the Spirit is poured out upon you, upon us as ministers of the gospel, our priority, our focus, our intention, any time any day, will be to please the Lord. To speak his mind. To do his will. No matter who is offended. We need him. We need the spirit of God. That's what the Lord said. You shall receive power. When he comes. Pray this morning. Pray this morning. Pray this morning. Let's call upon the Lord now. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. He is a quickening spirit. When he quickens you, the human frailties will not be a hindrance. Let's pray that the quickening spirit will take over us to keep running, to be available for his service. Whatever the challenges, we shall have the energy of the Holy Spirit to run. 
to move, to stand in the gap, to preach, to go all out, wherever you are. This is a moment of connection to the Spirit of God. He has been given to the church. He is abiding with the church forever. It's just for you to see the need. To accept that you need him. That I need him. That the church needs him. He's the one that guides. He's the guiding spirit. So that you will not labor in vain. You will not waste resources achieving nothing. We need him to guide us into what will be profitable to lead us to fruitfulness in the work of the Lord, in the vineyard of God. Please open your mouth and pray. Yes, you've been baptized before, but you need fresh infilling. You remember the apostles of old? In chapter 4, they were baptized in chapter 2. It was so clear. They preached and as Peter stood that day and declared the word of salvation, 3,000 souls. Yet in chapter 4, when they had that report of opposition to the gospel preaching, they came together and prayed again for fresh infilling. And they were baptized again. They were filled again. And they went out and prayed the word with all boldness. Multitudes, multitudes. Open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. Come afresh on me. The challenges are increasing. As the days of the end draws nearer, the challenges are increasing. Thank God for helping us yesterday, but we need him more today. So let's, like Paul the Apostle, he said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling. We must be pressing forward. We must be moving forward. And for us to do this, we must have the quickening spirit, the Holy Spirit, the powerful spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to drive us, to move us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us. Pray and say, Holy Spirit, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Nobody should be acting now as if we have enough. Remember, it is when we are hungry and thirsty for him that we get filled. He's here this morning. He has led his servant to make a declaration. It is for us now to pray into us this power, the blessing of this message. Please, everywhere, make sure you are crying unto the Holy Ghost now and say, Holy Spirit, take over me. Take over my life and ministry. Take over my church, the revival we need, so that the church of God will be truly representing Christ in this corrupt generation. It will take the Holy Spirit to withstand the tide of evil, rampant everywhere. Call upon the Lord now. Pray that the Holy Spirit will take over everything about our ministry. Make sure you are praying now. Holy Spirit, this is your hour. Take over my church. Take over my ministry. Take over my pulpit. You are the one in charge. Feel me within so that when I stand, what comes out from me will be by you. We be by you. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. 
When he is there, no fears. No power to threats to stop the preaching of the gospel. No yielding to compromise. Church, we need him now. We need the Holy Spirit. So much. So much. We know the days in which we live. But by the Holy Spirit, the church of God, we march on. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gate of hell cannot prevail against her. This can only happen when the Holy Spirit is in oppression to us in our churches. So let him take over. That's why the Lord has brought us to this ministers of professional conference. And the word of the Lord has been released. It is for us now to connect so that the purpose of this conference will be achieved in everyone's life. Everywhere, the Holy Ghost is ready to take over us now and fulfill God's purpose for the New Testament church, even in our time. He is ready. 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 If we are ready. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you for a moment like this. We thank you, Lord, for revealing to us the secret of succeeding in our calling. That no matter how bad things are in the world today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can move on. Fulfilling your word that you will build your church, the gates of hell will not prevent her, stop her. So, Father, I come, standing on your word now through your servant, on behalf of every minister here, every professional here, that the Holy Spirit will quicken everyone now and feel everyone now to do God's work, God's work in Jesus' name. When he comes, all those shakeable things hindering the progress of the church and the believer and the minister fulfilling God's will and mind in our time, the Holy Ghost will burn them up. So anything there, rearing his ugly head, trying to interfere with God's calling on us, trying to stop us from fulfilling God's plan, we pray right now, Holy Spirit, by your fire, let them be burnt in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray this morning that through the oppression of the Holy Spirit, all carnal things that are to be clouding the church today, membership today, workers today, even pastors today, that even in the world, they seem to make fun of even when they hear pastor. Lord, I pray that from the quickening power of the Holy Spirit, that we refine us, that we make us pure, that we make us holy, that we make us two servants of God. Anywhere we appear, the devil will go silent in Jesus' name. That as we carry the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, when we appear, the strongest occultic man, the strongest natural native doctor claiming and boasting of power. When we appear as ministers of the gospel, children of God, New Testament believers, they will go into hiding. And we shall preach the gospel successfully, bringing fruits into God's kingdom in Jesus' name. Every territory within our own surrounding. Lord, I pray that when we appear there, we shall succeed. Churches will be planted. Souls will be saved. The sick shall be healed. And the church will be revived in Jesus' name. Here in the city of Abba, Jesus will be Lord. All other gods will go silent in Jesus' name. 
and then spread to the whole Abia. Spread to the whole southeast. All over Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. The church of God will be on fire in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, grateful for your servant, through whom you are helping us, calling our minds back to your will. Together this morning, we lift him up into your hand. Asking, O oh Lord, that evermore you will use him to feed us spiritually. Inspire him. Anoint him. Increase him. Renew his strength. That Lord, if you tell it to come, if you tell it, Lord, that our Father the Lord can get to 100 years without his strength winning. And all of us following him everywhere, we shall be running with the same focus, achieving heaven's goal. Bless him, Lord, and use him evermore. Bless everyone this morning who have received this message. Holy Spirit, plant this word in our hearts. It will not be a message after the preaching we forget. But from now, what we've had this morning, we keep driving us to achieve God's goal for the church in our time. We see the blessing of this message in every life with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' almighty name, we have prayed. Jam your heart, your hands together for the Lord. Jam your hand if you have gotten anything. Jam your hand because the power has come to you. We got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, I will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Everybody. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. For we've got the power in the name of the Lord. the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. One more time. is there with you. No matter the raging of Satan, no more defeat in your life. 
you will be too hot for Satan to handle. We come to the conclusion of the minister's conference this morning, and we call on the Pentecostal uh, Fellowship official to... The Secretary of Khan, please to come for the closing remark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God the glory for this day that he has made. A day we have to rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful to God that he has fed us this morning. I believe strongly that anyone that listened attentively is going home today with something. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord for allowing himself to be used of God to bless our life this morning, to feed us this morning, to enrich us this morning, and also to empower us this morning. It is my earnest prayers that every blessings that he has declared over us he has released over us in the course of the message shall remain permanent with us in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate everyone who made our time to be here. The gospel ministers, our traditional rulers, our leaders at different levels of the Christian faith. I want to appreciate you. I want to say we are grateful that they have come to honor this invitation this very day. May the good Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus. It is our prayer that as you return home, God who brought you here safely, we equally lead you home safely in the name of Jesus. Let's remember that we are meeting again this evening for the crusade. And uh, this uh, uh, ministers and professional conference will also continue tomorrow morning by the same time. Remember, the glory of the latter day will be greater than the former. So tomorrow, I encourage you, don't miss out. Don't allow your seat to be empty. Make sure you come and occupy your position. May the Lord bless all of us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, sir. Let's all rise up as we share the grace together. Let's rise up. And we in fellowship share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Can we shout a thunderous amen? God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please all the uh, guest pastors from outside the